A uh, lady friend, my nephew and my brother um, gave me a birthday present um, of my mother and my father. And my sister already has a break here too. So, you know, it's kind of a family affair type of thing. Oh, okay. You know. So uh, so they have bricks that are next to each other? And well, my mother and father are like on this side, then there's a little space, and then my sister is on the other side. Cool. All right. All right. So please state your name and then your relationship to Rondo. My name is Vincent Bruce. I grew up on Eichelhardt Avenue, and that's just a couple of blocks from Rondo. And I was born in 1953, so I was here long before 94 came along. And, um, you know, it was a thriving uh, area. You know, they have businesses there. It was kind of a mixture of, uh, uh, you know, housing and, and business type of uh, area. And, uh, you know, then uh, 94 came along and took that out, you know. So it's unfortunate, but it's coming back. That's right. So then I'll skip to that question. What, what do you love about Rondo today? Today is that it's still alive. And there's still a future, um, and you know everything starts with uh, growth. You know, and from there, you know the sky's the limit. So, what was what is one of your favorite childhood memories of Rondo? Ooh, um, probably. I mean. Just growing up, you know, knowing the people in the area, you know, as kids, you know, the kids that you play with, you know, we play football in the street and a lot. You know, in wintertime, we used to uh, sled downhill and, you know, do things like that. We used to ride our bikes in the summertime, stuff like that. We flew, uh, got wooden airplanes that we buy from the drugstore for about 10 cents and uh, put them together and fly them. And they'll either get caught on a roof or run over by a car, one of the two, <laughs> you know. But, you know, it was just a part of growing up, you know. And when you can grow up with good people, you know, you, you know hopefully you come out a good person. Was there any uh, businesses or anything that you frequented or oh, what was um, some of your, what's? I mean, there was, on the corner of Rondo and Dale was, we always called it the milk store. And um, a person that lived across the street from us, uh, Mr. Rawlings, it was his store. So we went there every day, you know, bought our necessities. You know, I mean, it was before Cub, before, uh, um, you know, your other stores, Byerly's and all of that. You know, it was a neighborhood store, but they, you know, they served everybody just the way they uh, they did it. Maybe not on the scale, you know, that they do it now, but they had everything they had. Um, what do you feel Rondo needs right now? Uh... You know, it's, it's hard for me to say because I live in Minneapolis. <laughs> That's probably a bad thing to say, <laughs> but uh, um, I, I just think it, it needs, you know, um, what, commitment, dedication, you know, which is here, you know, and, you know, just the follow through, follow up, you know, uh, help it grow up. You know, or not, I shouldn't say grow up, but, you know, help it grow to, you know, what it was and maybe, you know, maybe more, you know, because it was thriving, like I said before, and uh, it can be done again. Um, when did... Okay. When, when did your family get here? Were they... Did it start in Minnesota? Or um, you know, now, see, for me, that's hard to say because I'm the youngest of five oh. from my family. Uh, one thing that happened earlier this summer, uh, grandmother 
um, was acknowledged as a, a founding member of Camford United Methodist Church, you know, for its 100th year uh, anniversary. So, you know, they were here, you know, the grand folks were here back then. Um, uh, you know, they've been here for a long time is what I can say. My father, he came here from Washington, Pennsylvania, uh, which is just south of Pittsburgh. Um, he was recruited to come play football, but once they got here, coach said um, he didn't want his kind on the team, you know. So, you know, he worked, he found jobs, you know, but he stayed. You know, my mother was born in St. Louis. She came here uh, very young. Um, to what age, I don't know, but she stayed, and so this is where we were born. You know, and some of us are still here. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to the youth of Rondo? Um, learn, learn the history. Uh, also, you know, put your your things in there, and, you know, to mix in the old with the new. You know, don't put it down. Just you know, mix it in, and. Um, Learn and enjoy it, you know, enjoy it, love it, live it, and, you know, everybody get along, you know, put the guns away, you know, put the guns away, you know, start shaking hands instead of, you know, fighting, you know, that's how you grow. That's good. That's great. Thank you. All right. So um, state your name and then whatever title or your relationship to Rondo. I, my name is Brooke, B-R-O-O-K-E Blakey, B-L-A-K-E-Y, and I'm a lifelong born and raised member of Rondo. Grew up at 846 Concordia, which is the corner of Concordia, Victoria. So I am Rondo. So what brings you to the plaza today? So what brings me to the plaza today is that we have a brick dedicated to my father, Arthur Blakey, um, placed on the plaza today um, in memory of him. He passed away last year in August. Um, again, another lifelong member of the Rondo community, grew up on St. Anthony, which was where the freeway is now located. And so um, they lost their house during um, the Rondo reconstruction and eventually moved over to Central Avenue. And then when he became an adult and was able to purchase land and, and do those things, he bought um, our, my family home where I was born and raised right here on Concordia and Victoria. So what does your brick say and why? What is that? Um, our brick says lived, laughed, loved, and served. And that's kind of what, um, my father's philosophy was growing up that he lived for it, he laughed, he loved life, and he loved serving this community. I think what's ironic around the brick that is here is the location of where it is. Um, the VFW is where the plaza is now located, and that's also the place where um, back in 1993, he was actually shot at the VFW. Um, dealing with a um, strong arm robbery that occurred there, um, protecting the community. And I think um, it holds a special place for our family because it's also a place where um, he also discovered forgiveness. And so he had an opportunity to um, forgive um, Pastor Givens for uh, the incident that occurred. And I think it gave the opportunity to heal the community in a way um, when we talk about law enforcement and its interactions in the community, I know as um, a law enforcement officer myself, um, we are not necessarily, we're too black to be blue and too blue to be black. And so it was an opportunity to um, let the community know that we're here and we're a part of that organization and we are really here to protect and serve um, our community. And I think that that was a real thing. So that's kind of what that brick means to us and means to my family. And so it's very important. I mean, and even just this summer, we took our family photos down here on the plaza um, um, with my mom and my girls just to kind of have a little bit of that spirit along with them, even though he's not here anymore. This is where he spent a uh, large amount of time. This is where I spent a large amount of my time, you know, at the VFW and Miss Ann's kitchen um, having burgers and fries because she could do it like no other. Um, 
walking on the retaining wall that's no longer there, riding my bike down the alley that's no longer here, well, partially here. Um, and so this was kind of my stomping grounds. Even in this building that we're filming in, I played many um, ding door ditch with the pastor, bless us. But uh, anyway, we uh, used to ring the doorbell that was back there and then take off on our bikes. And so, um, you know, there, there, there's a lot of sentimental um, feelings about this area and about this place. And so it just fits so seemingly well. Um, what is your, well, you kind of talked about some childhood memories, so I'll leave that alone. Um, what do you love about Rondo today? What I love about Rondo today is that it is um, a constant and consistent reminder of what it is to be part of uh, African American community, a black community. Um, even though we, uh, we've all grown up, um, I still live here. I still live probably seven blocks away in um, Central Village, which was one of the areas that was built to kind of remedy um, them tearing down uh, the old Rondo neighborhood. So I still get um, a little bit of history. And so it's still me. I live across the way from the doctor who delivered me. Um, so I mean, it's still very much who I am. Um, even as we grow and we sell houses and we move around and all that kind of stuff, it still is um, a place that I can call home. It's a place that you can come back to and say, you know, I remember this. Um, it's a place where you're just comforted. You know that even though it's changed and some people look different, it's still very the same at its core. And so that's, you know, one of the things that I think about when you think of Rondo, you know, that's what it is. It's, it's home. What do you feel Rondo needs right now? Um, I think what Rondo needs is the ability to get back to that um, village. I think we've kind of stepped away from that and we've scared away um, from figuring out who our neighbors are um, and how to continue to build that community. You may have not necessarily came from here, but once you're here, you are part of home. And I think if we can get back to that village approach where we look out for each other, regardless of what we look like and what ethnicity or background or how much haves or have nots that we do have, and have the ability to go back to that community approach, because I tell people I am a village baby and all of that. And so um, it makes a difference, it really does. And, and having the ability to know that so-and-so is watching you know what I mean? And it's going to get back to somebody else, um, i.e. your parents or your grandparents or your auntie or whatever, and not wanting to um, tarnish your name in any sort of way. Um, I think that that's what we need to get back to. We don't watch out for each other like we used to. And, and growing up in here in the village, I mean, I can tell you my doorbell was ringing at 1 a.m., at 6 a.m., in the middle of dinner, and I can still stand out in that corner and raise my hand, and people will still honk regardless if I know who they are or not. But um, it is what it is. I have a, a, a funny story that, that I'll share that, that's truly Rondo, is that um, in my job now, I, I work with Metro Transit Police Department, and I happen to be down at um, Union Depot working with some of the unsheltered homeless population. And I ran into a gentleman, and I was like, anytime you need anything, you know, you just, you just let me know. I, you know, reach out to me. You're, you're trying to make your way to this, that, and the other. And so um, my mom calls me one night because um, we had people have asked, you know, has your father come to visit you? And I'm like, no, not necessarily. Um, and so I'm like, no. My mom called me one night. She's like, there's some guy knocking on the door. And in my police mentality, I'm like, oh, I'm on my way. Don't you answer the door. So I, you know, I rush into the driveway and the guy throws his hands up at me and he's like, hey, do you remember me? And I'm like, absolutely not, but okay, it, can I help you with something? And he was like, I saw your dad on TV and they were doing something about something and I remembered you and they said your name and I just wanted to let you know that I, I got a job and I get my first check and here's my ID and I got my license, but uh, can I get a bus card? Because you said if I ever needed anything um, that I could reach out to you. And I was like, yeah, at Union Depot, not at, you know, my parents' house. But me and my mom both kind of looked to the side, sky and said, okay, well played, Art Blakey, well played. And so it was just a, a constant reminder of people knew that that's where they could come and find help and solace and not any judgment. And the fact that that man th thought that it was okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. 
I signed him up for a tap car because I had one in the car and I was like, here you go. I said, you know, I don't advise you to, you know, ring anybody else's doorbell um, at eight o'clock at night, but, you know, I'm glad that, you know, you remembered that, but felt comfortable and confident enough to say, you know, hey, this is where I can come and get help. So, I mean, I think that's what Rondo is, that's what community is, and that's what we need to get back to. So, what advice, last question, what advice would you give to the youth of Rondo? Take pride in where you live. Figure out who your family is and build on that strength, and then include your friends in that process. Because you still, I still have lifelong friends, and you will have lifelong friends, but be proud of where you, who you are and where you've come from. That is it. Mortician. Um, I'm one of, I'm probably the only black female practicing in the state of Minnesota. Um, and I'm a mortician because of my grandfather. So, I don't know. How did, I mean, how did that all, so, did he have his own mortician business, or how did how did this all even come about? When my grandfather first came to Minnesota, he um, wanted to be a mortician. He worked in Brownsville, Tennessee, at a local funeral home and helped out there. So when he came to Minnesota, he actually enrolled at the University of Minnesota into their mortuary science program. Um, he got married and had children, and later became a cop to be able to provide. Um, but as he got older, I took care of him of his last year um, here. So we just kind of talked. I'm very close to my grandfather and I was in school but not sure what I wanted to do. And he said, what about you being a mortician? And I was like, oh, I don't even know what a mortician is or what exactly they did. And I looked into it and I said, I think I can do it. So um, I pursued that path and it was the greatest thing for me because as close as I am, and I started that path as an ode to my grandfather, but he, he really helped me find my purpose and what I'm here to do when I walk in my purpose. I felt a lot happier. I felt a lot more fulfilled. Um, so for me, it's an ode to my grandfather, but most importantly, being a part of the Rondo community and doing this brick for him was just a thank you for helping finding my purpose. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so can you please state and spell your name? Ashley Hampton, A-S-H-L-E-I-G-H, -E last name H-A-M-P-T-O-N. Right. And what is your relationship to Rondo? My relationship to Rondo would be through my grandfather, James Oliver Mann. Most people know him as Jimmy Mann. So what brings you to the plaza today? What, what is happening today? I think um, celebrating the community, the people of Rondo, how it built this community, the ties that make us all great in this community, and just showing how much, even though you may not know someone directly, but we are all connected indirectly in some way. Um, what, do you know what your brick says and why? Yes. My brick says, cop and activist James Oliver Mann, with his birth year 1923 to 2011. And I chose that engraving um, just to represent his life. Um, he is often known for the things that he did throughout the St. Paul community, the police officer that he was, the entrepreneur that he was. And for me, it was important to be a part of this day because I am where I am today because of him and the things that he instilled in me and the career path that it led me on. Um, okay, so you kind of answered the question too. Okay. Why, why do you think that this plaza is important? What, what does it mean to the Rondo community? I think it's important in regards to our legacy for those that are not originally from here I'm not originally from Minnesota. I'm originally from Decatur, Georgia. My parents and my grandfather and my Nana, they're from this area. So having those ties to be able to read and hear um, what the construction of 94 did to this community, what this community was like before and after it. I think that's important to know um, as part of this legacy and being part of the foundation of the St. Paul community. 
since you were a grandbaby, do you have any favorite um, childhood memories of Rondo? I mean, did you come and visit, all that kind of stuff? Um, I did visit, um, but more so as a teenager. And I lived right on Igle Heart. Um, so it used to be called People's Park, so I lived right across the street from People's Park. Um, it's where I learned my work ethic. It was Rondo Days was one of the first parades I've ever really been to, um, watching the drill teams and the food vendors. So I learned a lot, and my kids are part of the Rondo community now. What do you love about Rondo today? I love the fact that the people that are originally from Rondo, um, the children that grew up, like my, my parents and my grandfather, that they're still here to see those connections for me to introduce myself and feel a sense of family unit, a village. Um, I think in today's time, we lose a lot of that village and village is very important in raising a family and growing. Um, as I said, Rondo has become a part of my village and I plan to give back to Rondo as well. What do you feel that, what do you feel that Rondo needs right now? Um, I feel that Rondo most importantly um, needs more black owned businesses. Um, I think that's very important and different businesses, things that you don't think about on a day-to-day, -day. so not always a restaurant or a salon, but other trades where children in the school and in this community can learn, um, come in and be an intern, those sort of things, where it just creates other avenues for children in math and science and engineering and that sort of thing. I think we need more black-owned businesses in this area. What do you feel Rondo needs right now? I think Rondo needs, most importantly, more black businesses. Um, businesses that give back to the community, that treat... Um, uh, you got it, you got it, you got it. You got it. Oh, am I okay? Yeah, you're okay. Right. Sorry. Um, I think Rondo needs more black businesses. I think that's very important for this community, where it also teaches children's different trades, um, things that we don't typically see or think about, um, whether it's math and science and engineering trades that really give something to the community and give children other aspects to look at where you can still make a very good living. Um, but we definitely do need more black businesses in this area. And what advice would you give to the youth of Rondo? Ooh, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. My advice would be to enjoy Rondo. Um, children aren't coming outside as much anymore. Um, I'm a product of the Jimmy Lee and Summit University Teen Center. Um, be a part of those programs. You know, they don't survive if our children aren't going. For parents to get their children enrolled and um, show them come out because that's what will really keep this village going, keep Rondo alive, its legacy, that sense of connection. I think getting outside, meeting people, talking, saying hello, how are you, um, that's really important. Good afternoon. My given name is Norman Harry Rawlings. I grade up, when I grow up, I hated the name Norman. But that problem was solved right away because almost everyone had a nickname. And my nickname was Speed. And if you didn't know the person's nickname, you didn't know them. To this day, Speed is all the hundreds of people I've met on my journey know. Unlike a lot of you, I was born here at 573 Iger Hard Avenue back in 1926. And as a kid growing up, we knew or knew of everyone from Rice Street to Lexington Avenue. My memories of Rondo is it was a very vibrant and busy avenue. I can say that because I probably lived on Rondo more than anyone else you know. I also spent more time on Rondo. 
At one time I lived on Rice and Rondo where the Rondo Striker or the Rondo Mariah turned to go downtown. I also lived on the 500 block just west of Neal's funeral home. At one time we crossed the borderline which was Dale Street and we lived at 712 Rondo across from the Maxfield School Playground. And when I came home from the service, I lived with my mother at 437 Rondo, upstairs over Maceo and Lola Finney. Outside of the family, I was the first one to see Corky when they brought him home from the hospital. It's hard to believe as a baby on Rondo, he grew up and became the chief of police for the city of St. Paul. There are other events that jog my mind because there are thousands of stories in the Naked City. My best friend and I, there was a restaurant on the corner of Farrington and Rondo. The lady who ran it was named Miss Goodman. And every day my friend's mother would tell us what transpired that day. Well, one day, public enemy number one, John Dillinger, looking for some soul food, walked in that restaurant and sat down in the corner. He put his gun in his lap and covered it up with a napkin. And at that time, one of the uh, area drunks came in and made some bad remarks and wondered why he was doing that. So they had the bus run him out of there real quick. Then there was Tiger Jack Reynolds, who rented bicycles on Farrington and Rondo at one time. And one time, Tiger was riding his bicycle from a McCubbin down to a Rondo, and that was a, like a small hill. And even though there were no more streetcars running, the tracks hadn't been removed and he got caught in the tracks and it threw him about 15 feet and he had a few broken bones. Then there was the Turtle Club, which I managed for five years. The Turtle Club was one of the most famous after hour places or bottle clubs in that area at that time. And then, and after they raided us, uh, we uh, got raided and they took uh, up over 250 people to jail. And uh, the, the, after the Turtle Club, I went to the American Legion post. In 1990, and I ran that place till 1908 when I walked away from there. Many. The Turtle Club was one of the most famous after hour places in that time frame. It was a bottle club and it was located at 394 Rondo on some of the most famous after hour spot in the Twin Cities. And after that, uh, I, uh, after the American Legion post, I uh, walked away from there in 2008 after my wife passed. And uh, so Rondo, to me, I will always remember and all the, uh, because uh, of the camaraderie we had and because uh, it was so much fun there growing up as a kid. Uh, when, if that's, uh, okay. That's good. That's good. That's great. Great job. Thanks for sharing your story Thank with you. us. Thank <laughs> you.